Hey you guys, Manny Gomez here with News by Muse. Today we're here to talk about the John Wick franchise, which no doubt is more popular than ever. Combined, the four films have brought in over a billion dollars at the box office. The latest of those films, John Wick Chapter 4, has contributed $426 million of that. Throughout the four films, the franchise has built a rich world of characters and locations that are just begging to be explored. This week, Peacock is premiering a three-part event titled The Continental from the World of John Wick. Here, we travel back in time to the 70s to explore the origins of the iconic Hotel for Assassins, arguably the centerpiece of the John Wick universe, through the story of a young Winston Scott, played by Colin Waddell, and witness how he takes control of the Continental. To get us ready for the series, Peacock invited us to the iconic Roosevelt Hotel in Hollywood which had been transformed to the fabled building so we can learn from the creative teams behind the next chapter in the John Wick franchise. Every great series needs a strong lead, and the bar is raised even higher when your future self is played by Ian McShane. According to executive producer and director Albert Hughes, it was executive producer Basil Iwanek who advocated for Colin Waddell. For me, what strikes me about Ian McShane is his eyes. Those eyes are incredible. I mean, even from Sexy Beast, which I don't know if you guys ever saw. It's, yeah. He's, he doesn't even talk in that movie, but he's terrifying. And his eyes could vacillate between like charming and there's a twinkle in his eye and, 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 and fun, and then on a moment's notice could be lethal and scary. Um, and Colin was the one actor who I felt had Ian's eyes, where you looked at Colin's eyes and thought, okay, that is somebody who will grow into that character of someone who, um, will charm somebody before they, he, you know, shivs them. Part of what makes the John Wick franchise so popular are the epic action sequences, something that the creative team knew would need to be different. You can't get away with what a two-hour movie gets away with, which is just a non-stop 30-minute or 25-minute or 10-minute set piece. Nor would I want to. I come from the school of uh, loving Serge Leone films where it's all about the tension and the build-up and a quick release of violence, right? So I had to have the happy medium of learning from what Chad does and learning from what Sergio does and kind of finding that new balance. Lucky for the team, action director Larnell Stovall was up to the task of trying to take audiences' movie expectations to the small screen. What I try to find is the most quick, efficient way to get the actors to be badasses as fast as we can. Even though the quality was feature film, we were on the TV schedule, which means in a feature film, if you take like the John Wick sequence, for example, huge scale, huge scope of everything, cinema photography, action design, storytelling, amazing. They might have four or five days for one sequence. We might have one day for that same sequence. So with your expectations, you would expect the same quality in that four to five day sequence that we have to deliver in one day as well. So my job is to make sure I find a way to bring that together with the allotted time I have, which means you have to teach the actors faster, you have to cater to their learning and choreography muscles faster as well so we can get that type of result in that same amount of time. The idea for the action sequences were for them not necessarily to be big, but instead look cool and interesting. Something as simple as two people fighting in a phone booth. But it's not just about the moves you also got to have the right outfits. And that's where costume designer Sarah Arthur came in to help. Albert wanted to um, distinguish between the different groups of gangsters. So, for example, Cormac's men in the Continental, they needed to fit in to the Continental, which was quite a smart establishment. So they'd be, they were in the Navy in the black suits with the burgundy shirts or Navy shirts, but very dark but um, that was their sort of look. Um, then we'd have the gangsters that he called upon when his gangsters weren't getting his press back. So um, they were, I, I sort of made them more military, um, you know, big reefer jack is black, dark, like the twins, like Hansel and Gretel, so the leather, the dark leather and uh, the black. We had an incredible time learning about the process and challenges of bringing this franchise to the small screen. Of course, I couldn't help but also get into the spirit of the fabled hotel. Don't miss out on the Continental from the World of John Wick, a three-part event premiering on September 22nd, only on Peacock. With News by Muse, I'm Manny Gomez.